Good morning, everybody, and happy Halloween to everybody. It's Emma and Suki, and you know, whatever. Dogs will be dogs, but um, happy Halloween to everybody out there. It's it's almost November, and I cannot believe it. It's October 31st, and that means we have, like, what, 61 days, 62 days, until the year's up. And that means we'll finally pass 2020. Either that means the ongoing suffering, quote-unquote, ends... Or, 2021 is going to be worse. But I guess we're going to have to wait for about 61 days to find out truly what 2021 is going to be like. But I suspect it's probably going to be pretty similar to 2020. Just maybe not as chaotic. Now I need to knock on some wood because I'm, I just jinxed everybody in the nation. And in the world, so I'm sorry, but 2021 is gonna be worse now because of me. You're welcome. I'm joking, you know, but I've got a bucket of feed right here. I'm about to feed all these hungry toads. Got a bunch of feed in there, a lot of feed. There's you some. There's um layer crumble in this and uh also Royal King has commodity mix which is just a bunch of different feeds that work for all of the animals. And then there's a couple scratch grains in here. And it works well for all of them. Because the goats can get what they want. The chickens can get what they want. And they'll all fight for it, of course. Because, you know, animals. But it works. So, yay for us, I guess. And we don't usually have to buy so much feed a month. Well, that's also because our numbers are still down. But, according to my sister, she believes all of these females right here, the female goats, are pregnant. So it's possible that come December, we might have six... We're expecting at least seven kids. Because Coco, um... Coco has done up to triplets and did twins the first time. So that's probably two or three right there. Annabelle has done twins and then the rest are unknowns. So if Coco does triplets and Annabelle does twins, that's five right there. Then we still have three other females that are possibly pregnant. So who knows what's going to happen. We may end up with, I don't know, maybe five goats or five kids. But we could also end up with 12. I don't know about you, but I don't think we want to deal with 12 kids all at once. Because according to my sister, when we got this boy over here, sweetest goat we've ever had, by the way, especially for a male, they, she believes he bred all of them within the first week. And we got him in... August, I want to say. So, if that's true, most of their due date should be around December, which is coming up really fast. So, maybe at some point in the next month or two, I'll have videos of baby goats. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these goats aren't pregnant, like this one over here, and, well... That one standing by the barn, she looks pregnant to me. But 
the two I just showed, they're very young, so I don't, I don't, I'm not sure they're pregnant, but if they are, it'll be interesting to see what they look like, because all of the babies we got this last time were black and white, but now our male is white and black, so who knows, we might get mostly black kids, but we have a lot of variety now because now we have a brown goat and we have a gray and white one and we have a bunch of black ones and then there's mister he still doesn't have a name but he is white and black so there has to be some sort of gene in there that will get us different colors because if we get I don't know eight of the same color style it's kind of dull to me there was Actually, last year when we had, when Coco gave birth and Annabelle gave birth, all within a, a month of each other, we had five little kids running around, and there was only one of them that was not black and white. But he was the male, so we had to get rid of him. No, we didn't have to, we just sold him. And one of his brothers and a sister... Yeah, something like that. Anyway, there's still a little bit of feed. So I'm gonna... There you go. We always give the goats a little pile to themselves so that they get the most out of it. Because spreading it out, most of the chickens can get the stuff before the ducks, the ducks and the chickens. And... The geese can. Fight. There's a fight. Rooster versus hen. Other hen has come to save. That rooster has lost now. He won against the first hen, but not against two others. So, um... Hurricane Zeta just came through here. Uh, what day? When's Thursday? It came here through here Thursday, and I've the last video I did was me down there in the backyard, just surveying the creek and what it's done to flood. Because I looked out the window and I just saw how high the creek was, and I was like, okay, I have to go down there. It was scary, honestly, because imagine getting sucked into that. I know it's still a creek, but still, there's some really deep points in that creek. So to see it nearly cresting over some of the deepest points down there, which I, I, I mentioned was probably like seven, nah, that's too deep. Five or six feet deep. That's. That's really dangerous. Don't want to get swept away in that. Because if you hit your head on something. You'll go unconscious. And then you'll drown. And nobody wants that. Do you? And you know. We're in South. South. Uh, Southwest. Southwest Virginia. And. Hurricane Zeta basically came right over us, and it did a lot of uh, flooding in our backyard, but we're on a hill, so we don't have to worry about it. But if it could do this here, not even in the place it hit, I couldn't imagine what it's like in Louisiana, which has been hit for the third time in like two months. I'm sorry for all of you. I'm sure you didn't want to have that happen this year, but, yikes, it's a good thing, because we were expecting Hurricane Zeta to come this way, and it did, but it's a good thing that the river we have that runs through here, there's a dam, and Philpot Dam, and it's, they were... 
getting prepared for it and letting some of the floodgates out be a couple of days before Hurricane Zeta came over, and that's a good thing because this, that probably would have been the second time this year that rain and whatnot has caused the lake to raise enough to actually spill over the top. And until this year, it had never done that before. And that, I'm pretty sure the Philpott Dam has existed since the 50s, I want to say. So, for it to go over once, that's one thing. But have it twice in the same year, that's another thing. But thankfully, as far as I can see, it didn't happen. And the preparation they did saved a lot of people right? some damage and some money because it was September. We had some really bad rains in late August or early September, and it caused a lot of flooding because we weren't expecting the rains, but they came, and it wasn't due to a hurricane either. But they came, and it went over the top of the the dam. This is like the third, second time actually, the second time this year that the outlying areas near the river have flooded really bad because of rain or hurricanes from, well rain from hurricanes or just regular rain. And it almost did it the third time but it's a good thing for the preparation. I don't know how bad it did around the river but I the last time I went over, which was yesterday, pretty much the day after the all the rain had stopped, it didn't look like it was that high. And there wasn't any visible flooding anywhere. So, th that's good. This is... This is the most wet but dry season we've ever had. Usually in Virginia, at least where we are, Spring, summer, and winter, except for like June, June-ish, are all extremely wet. But then fall hits and it's really dry for two months. But we, I don't think we've had a single actual day of good solid rain for the last two months now. But we've had three hurricanes come over us two or three at least and it gave us so much rain so it's helped this area come back and it's grown in so much more than it was before but I didn't expect it to because again September and October before November are always usually bone dry here but in some regards the hurricanes have helped but the majority of the hurricane, we don't need them. And the problem is that the hurricane season's not even over yet. I was reading up on something earlier this morning that suggested that there's more active systems already developing in the Atlantic, which will possibly indicate more hurricanes. So I was looking it up. And, um, this is the second most active hurricane, Atlantic hurricane season on record. The second most, but the first, the most active was in 2005 when there was 31 active systems. Not all hurricanes, but 31 systems, pretty much labeled like, tropical cyclones or depressions and stuff like that on up to category 5 hurricanes and so we're at I think it was 30 active systems in 2005 and we're at 28 for uh, 2020 so just you know, with everything else going on in 2020, this is just like the cherry on top of the crap cake. I'm joking, but you know, I just can't, this has not been, this has not been a really good year for anybody. 
if, unless you just wanted to stay home from work, then, hmm. In other ways, though, this year has been good because a lot of people have gotten to spend time with family and friends that they, if they were working, so rarely got to do. So having six or eight months of not working, you get to spend so much time with your family. And I know there's some people out there who wouldn't give that up for the world. Because once they go back to work, it's just going to... It's almost like their family becomes a side job, essentially. But, you know what? I've got off on a tangent. I'm just kind of standing here in the middle of our yard, just talking through a phone. But someone out there is going to enjoy this. Someone, somewhere, will enjoy this. And whoever you are, thank you for watching. And happy Halloween to everyone who's watching. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Peace.